Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be reacting to a challenge to Dr. Zaki Knight from a Christian. Guys, let's get straight into this. Yes, hey. we have a non Muslim brother. Yes, the most welcome brother. I'm Christopher. I just want to know because the Holy Quran says believe in the messenger, Prophet Muhammad. And the Holy Bible says those who believe in Jesus will have eternal life. And uh, both as according to the Quran, both of them are messengers of God. And uh, I want to know, where did Jesus make his mistake? Uh, without, uh, that means, where did he make any mistake that he is unable to save the people? Brother, that's a very good question. The Quran says, believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Bible says, believe in Jesus, he will give eternal life. So where did Jesus make a mistake? So according to the Quran, both of them, where did he make a mistake? Brother, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never made any mistake. It is the church which made a mistake. According to us, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is one of the mightiest messengers of God. When Jesus says that, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto my father, but through me, is correct. That means you are the messenger of God. Same thing what Prophet Muhammad said. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, according to the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto to my father, but through me. That means if you follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you will go to your father. That means you will go to Jannah, you will go to paradise. Eternal life means paradise. Similarly, if you today, but Jesus Christ also said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Gospel of John chapter 16, verse number 7. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. Talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So today as a Christian, if you really love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Jesus Christ never made a mistake. It is the church which says Jesus is God. Jesus Christ never claimed divinity. As I mentioned earlier, if any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. It is the church which has a mistake. Not Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. And it is clearly mentioned in the book of Acts. Chapter number 2, verse number 22, that ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. Yeah. So never did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claim divinity. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was never wrong. It is the false understanding of the Bible. So I... As a believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a person who loves Jesus, peace be upon him, I say that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 720, Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. For until the heavens and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. For whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and teach men to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach the same will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees exceeds the righteousness Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, you cannot break a single law or a title of the Old Testament. 
It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, chapter number, verse number 7 and 8, that you should not have poke. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, you should not have poke. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, you should not have poke. The Christians have poke, but the Muslims don't have poke. It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, and the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 8, that you should not be drunk with wine. We Muslims don't have alcohol, but the Christians have alcohol. Jesus Christ, speak. Guys, this is, I feel he's judging. Okay, you come up some people, like some Christians have alcohol. I, I would tell you I'm a Christian, I don't have alcohol, I don't eat pork because I believe it's a sin. It was written in my book that it's a sin. So there's no way I know this is clearly a sin and I would do it. I, I, I can't say I'm going to buy pork. Like I can't, I don't eat it because I feel, not I feel because it is written to not eat pork so i don't eat pork and alcohol guys i don't take alcohol because i'm a christian and i don't take it because i feel i don't feel why am i using this word i feel every time because it's wrong because god said give if i'm using the bible give alcohol to those that want to perish so if you have that kind of mindset i want to perish you should take alcohol but it was also written that like some kings in the bible it was also written that you shouldn't get drunk why taking alcohol? But I won't say alcohol is a big symbol. Like, don't just take it. It was written, don't take it. So don't take it. Because I don't see the point in taking what is written, don't take it. But guys, him saying Christians, like, you are like generalizing everything. Like, there's some Christians that don't really know their faith. Or some Christians that take it because they feel God blessed every animal. So, because that's the excuse some people take, that God has blessed everything. So why would you not take from what God has given you? But I understand that, Papa. It was still written, don't take box. So, guys, let's get back. Please be upon me, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, that he was circumcised on the eighth day. The Muslims are circumcised, most of the Christians are not circumcised. So hey! Sorry, <laughs> guys. Guys, okay, this is really, it, it got to me. I don't know the Christians he's meeting or the Christians he's seeing, but I had this before. I think I talked about it. I don't, I personally don't know of any Christian and I can tell you like, I have been around a lot of Christians, like a lot of, a lot of Christians. I don't know of any Christian that is not circumcised. I don't know of any. I don't think I've seen anybody that is not circumcised. No, it's strange. You think Christians are not circumcised. Like, you coming out openly to say Christians are not circumcised, I feel like it's wrong. Like, to be honest, I'm not trying to come after him or anything, but like, I can tell you that most Christians, are, I don't know if there's even any of Christians, any Christian that is not circumcised. Or maybe the person was a peg, pagan or he came to christianity because it's it's written in the culture like based on is it abraham or was it yes abraham yes also circumcised on the eighth day eighth seventh yes one of those days like i have a junior brother and also circumcised that day i also realized that they like everyone like it's part of our culture already so i don't understand this guys please let me know in the conversation maybe i am um, with a small christian group i, I don't understand a lot so please let me know in the comment section thank you christian means a person who follows the teachings of jesus christ peace be upon him we muslims are more christian than the christian themselves we love jesus christ we respect him we revere him we follow him but we don't worship him because he was the messenger of god and was not god hope that answers the question brother so do you believe that jesus is the messenger of god do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? I, I don't. Because, you don't? Because I believe in the Bible. But Bible says in the Gospel of John, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Who is this person Jesus Christ, peace be upon talking about? Who? Haven't you studied your Bible? 
Yeah, no, he has spoken about the Holy Spirit of the okay, Lord. Okay, very good. That means you know your Bible now. You are saying this spirit of truth, what Jesus Christ is speaking about, is the Holy Spirit. Go a few verses before. Gospel of John chapter 16, verse number 7, it says that it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. The criteria for this spirit should come is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. For if I go away, shall I send him? The Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came. He was also there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was there. He was there in the womb of Elizabeth. He was there when Jesus was being baptized. So how can this be the Holy Spirit? Tell me. That means you don't understand the... Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I go, shall I send him? So the requirement of the spirit of truth should come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. When Jesus Christ is there, this comforter cannot come. Holy Spirit was already there when Jesus was there. So how can you say this prophecy refers to the Holy Spirit, my dear brother? Can you help me to understand the Bible? Yes. It doesn't refer to the Holy Spirit. It Guys, as a Christian and someone that I've started reading the Bible, like, I think I'll answer this question. Because he said, how do you know it refers to the Holy Spirit? I know a lot of Muslims will... Like some people that don't really listen to my videos with open mind. I'm not trying to, I can tell you we are doing research and we are trying to search for knowledge. We are not trying to see if Muslim is right or Christian is right. I'm just telling you what I know and I believe in. So guys, Jesus said, before Abraham, I was. So Jesus clearly said he was there before Abraham. And Jesus said he was there from the beginning. So if you listen to it, Jesus was there based on what Jesus said. Like, I'm not fabricating it. It's based on what Jesus said in the Bible. I can't give you verse now. But maybe when I'm editing this video, like, I'll put the verses here. But based on what Jesus said, we, we were made to believe that Jesus had been there. But he came when Mary put birth to him. And he knew about himself from birth. Like, he had... So he had the knowledge from birth. So going to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was there, but he wasn't given the authority to, to like manifest himself. Because if we want to be honest, after Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit came upon because the, the, the disciples went to the upper room and started praying. The Holy Spirit came upon them and this was a significant testimony that a lot of people who were not Christians wrote about it's not about you like you don't really have to go from the bible like there are a lot of different books that actually still say the same thing about what was written in the bible so the disciples had fires on their head and they were speaking in other tongues that people around them could understand like people they were marveled and they were able to convert at least ten thousand people that day so like I want you to understand where the Christians are coming from when they say that the Comforter is the Holy Spirit because immediately as Jesus left, that miracle happened. So this is why we say is the Comforter. Like, I feel if you understand where you're coming from and understand where you're coming from, we can actually move further a lot of, like, quickly. We can move further quickly. So, guys, let's get back into this. It refers to... Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And his prophecy is also mentioned in the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. In the New Testament, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 26. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 7. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 12 to 14. All these references are talking about no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I've given a talk on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the Bible. Now, I'm asking you, if you believe in the Bible, when Jesus Christ has prophesied the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, why don't you believe in Jesus that Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger? Why? That means you believe half the teachings of Jesus Christ are not complete? Because, uh, because uh, the teaching uh, says, uh, I'll send you a comforter. Correct. But he, he never mentioned about a person or any... Any name was indicated okay. on there. Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. I'm quoting in Hebrew. Hikko mametakim vikulli muhammadim zaidudhi wa zairai bayna jerusalem. His by name is mentioned. Guys, 
I feel this verse he just quoted is. I I I, I'm trying my best to be polite and. I understand the verse. Muhammad Jim was there, but if you read it, if you read it, it is clearly is not talking about a prophet or is not talking about anything concerning a prophet. A name was called Muhammadim, and that was before Muhammad was even born. Or, yes, before he was born. So, like, if he was talking about a prophet, I feel the 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 verse could have related to a prophet or something. I like, please, I, I hope I'm talking to logical people here that actually, like, you can think and see what the verse is talking about. Like, you can read it, even if you want to read the Hebrew version. Shit. I'll be back. Guys, you can actually read read the Hebrew version and see what I'm talking about. Like, it wasn't talking about Prophet Muhammad. Like, I wish Prophet Muhammad was actually mentioned in the Bible. Like, we will send you a last and final messenger that will come with, like, like, now he was mentioned like that. I feel Christians will have a hard time believing Prophet Muhammad. But I... I, I think Prophet Muhammad is believable because based on what he wrote and like he understand that he was receiving inspiration from God. Like it's obvious in the Quran. Like I will be honest. Like what Prophet Muhammad wrote, it was obvious that he received that message from God. Yes, I will say. Guys, let's get back. Let's complete this. Muhammad is the name. M is for respect. They say he's altogether lovely. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. His name is mentioned also in the Old Testament. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Now do you believe? I'll no. I, I'll refer it. I'll You'll refer have to it. ask your church first. No, no, not the church. Not the church. Who will have to ask? I'll, I'll go through it and I'll, I'll confirm myself. So how long will you take yes. to confirm? Okay, tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Fine, I'm going there after tomorrow. So by tomorrow morning, you can ask the organizer, contact me. Fine. Either you accept Islam, or if you can't prove, then if you prove Jesus is God, I will accept Christianity. If you cannot, you accept Islam. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, bro. But I, I love this. I love the fact that having like a high educated, like mutual understanding in that. I like the fact that having a good communication. Like I love the communication between the both of them, guys. Let's let let me try and prove something to you. I, I told you I'm making research. And some of you say I'm making the wrong research, but this actually sparked my 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 mindset. What I do and I feel I will continue with it. Guys, first of all, Jesus was actually prophesied. And in the names the angel gave to Mary, he said he will be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Like, I really wanted to understand where Christians are coming from. Like, yes. The name, it means God with us. And if you see a Christian bowing down to a cross or something, they are using it as a symbol. But I feel it's wrong because... God never said you should use it as a symbol. Like, you can pray straight to God without no olive oil, holy water, blah, blah, blah. Like, I feel God knows your heart. If you pray to God, God said he loved when his children pray to him in close doors. Like, you and God together. Like, I'm feeling goosebumps now, guys. Like, when you know you want to pray to God, like, you, God, just go and pray without any help of the pastor, help of this, help of this. Like, I feel you can intercede to God by yourself. Like, you don't need help from anyone, guys. Like, he's your father. He is your father. You just need to be more committed and open with your Bible and stuff. But, guys, back to this. Like, I did some search for you. And what I searched, First Timothy 2, verse 5, I'm going to be giving scriptures that it says for there is one god and one mediator between god and mankind the name is jesus christ then immediate the galatians 3 verse 20 immediate however implies more than 
one party, but God is one. You see, I believe the Bible clearly says that God is one. But to be honest, I don't know where the Trinity came out from. And I'll be honest, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Because Jesus said he is the Son of God. Let me use the word Son of God. You you can translate it any way you want to translate it, but I will use the word Son of God. But I don't believe Jesus is God. Even if Jesus said, accord me the same respect you accord to my Father. Like, when I read that verse, I was shocked. I, I will say I'm little... Like, I I haven't read the Bible cover to cover, but like, I'm reading it and I am seeing amazing things in it. When I saw that verse, I call me the same respect you call to God. Understand that Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Understand that God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I understand that Jesus said, no one is greater than my father. Like, my father is one. I, I need the help of my father. Like, Jesus actually prayed to his father. But Jesus said some words that spark some some conspiracy. But I don't believe Jesus is God because Jesus clearly said he is not God. So I believe Jesus is the son of God. I believe Jesus is the mediator. We can't pray to the father except through him. Because Jesus clearly said it. No one comments to my father except through me. And you guys don't believe in the death of Jesus Christ, okay? I'll stop you. But the death of Jesus Christ, I feel I'm going to make more research and see if it actually happened or not. Try my best to prove it. But if I can't, so be it. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. Then what you think about this video, guys? Please feel free to tell me I have a close heart in the comment section. Because I know all of you like seeing it. But some people that actually enjoy, enjoy my content and understand me actually know that this boy is making progress. Well, some people are like, you have a close heart. You can't look at this so close. Guys, I'll see you next time.